This is the GoStream M2 by OC, a dual HDMI switcher used for streaming and other video projects. It has built-in picture-in-picture or picture-by-picture -picture functionality. In this video, I'm going to show you how it works and what scenarios you can use it in. Let's get into it. Whether you're a Twitch streamer, doing some online presentations, or needing a simple HDMI switcher, this might be the product for you. My name is Patrick and this is Everyday Tech, Everyday Tech for Everyday People. And today we're looking at the latest product from OC, the GoStream M2. Full disclosure, OC did reach out to me and ask me if I'd take a look at this product. Although they did offer this product to me for free, they're not seeing this video before it goes up. All my opinions are my own. Actually, this is not the first product that OC has sent me. I did a review a while ago on the OC GoStream Deck, a direct competitor to the Blackmagic A10 Mini Pro. I'll first take you on a tour around this product, show you what it can do, tell you what scenarios I see it being used in, and tell you what I like and dislike about it. The N2 is a two input HDMI capture card. HDMI inputs can each handle a 4K 60 signal. Although the output is 1080p 60, whether it's through the single HDMI out port or through the USB-C connection. The USB-C connection is how you power the device as well. You can easily switch between the two inputs either by pressing on the input one or input two button. This middle circular button here can be used to switch between the two as well. The top group of buttons is where we can do more interesting things. These two left buttons are the PVP or picture by picture buttons. You can either do a top and bottom shot or a side by side shot. I can either do a zoomed out shot or a zoomed filled in shot for both top bottom and side by side layouts. You can either switch between the zoomed in and zoomed out layouts by pressing or using these two right buttons. Then the middle four buttons are the PAP or picture in picture buttons. You can put the window in any quadrant depending on which button you press. You can resize the window with the right two buttons. You can switch which input is in the foreground and background with the bottom middle button. Lastly, we come to the audio ports in the front. You have three different ports here. You have one mic input, one line input, and one headphone output. With the headphone output, you can monitor the audio without any delay. Now the audio is also captured through the HDMI port as well. As long as we're talking about audio, let's come to the first issue I have with this device, a little bit of the audio. Now I can hear all the audio through the headphone output jack, but when it comes to data or the connection through the USB-C, this is where I see a little bit different behavior. So let's say I'm in a Zoom meeting and I'm using the M2 for both video and audio uh, as an audio device as well. As long as I have the video on, it works. But when I turn off the video and I keep the audio on, the audio cuts out, even though the M2 is still selected as my audio device. Now, I don't know about you, but I think I'm like most people, and I've been in scenarios, especially in Zoom, where I want my video off, but I still want to talk. So I see this different behavior. In order for me to get my audio to work again, I turn back the camera back on in Zoom, and then my audio works again. Next, the audio is coming and capture, being captured through the HDMI inputs, but only when that HDMI input signal is active, whether it's by itself or in a picture-in-picture -picture or picture-by-picture -picture layout. So for example, let's say I have a camera in input one that has a microphone attached to it. As soon as I switch to input two, that audio from input one is muted. This is equivalent to AFV or audio follows video in the A10 Mini Pro. This is fine, but there is no option to have it always on like you have in the A10 Mini Pro. Now these are just little audio quirks that may or may not affect you at all, depending on your use case. You may never use the M2 as an audio device, but there are scenarios that I think that you may want to. This brings us to the different scenarios I think you would even consider getting the GoStream M2. First, let's say you're streaming gameplay, let's say on Twitch or on YouTube, let's say on our computer or on a console, and you don't want to depend on software for your different layouts, let's say on with OBS or vMix. Not depending on software also offloads the processing power you need on your computer to, to do the different layouts, which means you may not need a very powerful computer to do some of the streaming. Let's say you want to do a very simple setup. I have a camera set up here and a console, 
and I want my a simple picture-in-picture picture uh, view of myself playing the game. Or you want to do a picture-in-picture and picture showing your hands and your key movements, key inputs, to show that you're not cheating or kind of your movements of your hands. Now this is where the M2 is perfect. Of course, you can only do very simple layouts and you can't do anything fancy like chroma keying or green screening. Now this is a scenario where you do want your the M2 as the audio device because you may want to broadcast also the gameplay sound effects or the music in the gameplay. Now this is where the audio issues that I outlined before may come into play. Let's say the microphone is connected to my camera and there are times where I want to have the gameplay full screen and not show my face. Well, this is where the audio issues can come in. So I'm going to have to use the microphone input or line input of the M2 itself to make this work. The second scenario I see this being used is in simple presentations. So let's say I'm talking about a product and I want to tell you about what I like about the product. So I'm going to list off some bullet points. And I mean, as I'm speaking about the things I want that I like about our product, I may do a side by side like this and show you the points that I do like. So it's a very simple way to show you visually what I'm talking about. Of course, I can do a zoomed out look. So the full presentation is there. But if I'm doing the zoomed in look, you need to have everything in the center here. Of course, I can switch between two sides like this. Here we come to another issue that I have is it doesn't remember this layout right now. So right now I'm on the right side. But if I go back to myself and I go back to the picture by picture, it puts me back on the left side. Basically, what happens is whatever the input is now, you know, whatever you add to the picture by picture, it always puts the one on the right side. So if I go from the presentation to the side by side, it'll put me on the right side. So let me do that now. And it puts me on the right side here. Now, the reason why I didn't speak when I showed the input two is because my microphone is attached to my camera, which is on input one. So this is the audio issue I was talking about. So if I go to input two, it's going to mute input one. So I'm, if I'm talking, 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 as you notice that when we went to input two, it muted me. So these are some things that you need to figure out or work around. At least it does remember if it's zoomed in or zoomed out. So like right now I'm zoomed out. And it if I go back to the picture by picture, it remembers what layout it is. Same thing with the picture in picture. So let's say I'm going from here to the PIP here, picture in picture. It re, if I resize this, if I go back and forth, it remembers the size of that little window there. So it remembers the sizing, but doesn't remember exactly the layouts, especially for the picture by picture. It's pretty important. And then you have those audio issues as well. So I've given you a few scenarios where I think you could use this M2. I could think of so many other different scenarios that I might use it in. For example, in a few weeks, I'll be streaming a church event. So I'm going to have one shot as a wide angle shot of the congregation and another shot as a close up of the speaker itself. Let's say you're streaming an event and you need to set up another camera on a sign interpreter. This might be a real simple way to set that up. So what do I like about the GoStream M2? Well, it's really simple to use. I didn't have to look at any of the instruction manuals. It took me only about five to 10 minutes to know all the functionality and the little weird behaviors about it, but it was really simple to use. And of course, I love the built-in picture in picture, picture by picture functionality, like I'm doing now right here in this presentation with these bullet points. Then I love how it can do 4K60 inputs. Now that's one of the main things I didn't like about the GoStream deck, the bigger brother of this switcher. It couldn't handle more than 1080p60. So this can handle 4K60, which is, gives you a lot of flexibility. But of course, there are some things that I don't like. And of course, the first one being the audio behavior, especially when it comes to the USB-C connection. I saw this, especially in Zoom, when the video was off, the audio was muted, even though it was selected as the device in Zoom. The next is the picture by picture layout. It doesn't remember which side I'm on, but this is not that big of a deal because this is really meant for simple presentations. And then lastly, there is no transitions. I don't know if you noticed that every time 
I went from like, let's say this picture to this picture, it's a jump cut. When I'm going back from one input to another, it's a jump cut and there's no option to do some kind of transition. So I always like to do a fade transition, especially with the ATEM Mini or even the Ghost Stream deck, but there is no transition with this M2. Thanks again to OC for sending this out to me. They did send this out to me about a month or two before even announcing it. So I've had a lot of time to play with it. I really think this might be the right product for a lot of people, depending on the scenario, of course. Now, if you have any questions about the product, whether it's the right product for you in your situation, leave a comment below. I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Consider hitting that subscribe button. Until the next one, see ya.